Welcome to this presentation titled Pulsed Electromagnetic Field Therapy, Applications of PEMF in the Equine to be presented by Dr. Deirdre Caramonti and sponsored by Assisi Animal Health. Thank you very much. Thanks for everybody joining us. Tonight, I'm going to talk about targeted pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. I'm not sure the population who has used this before or who hasn't, but definitely take the time, ask questions. Uh, we are here to give a lot of good information. This is the first slide to introduce the ACC loop, which delivers weak pulsing microcurrents to tissue using a pulsed electromagnetic field. These currents cannot be felt, which is wonderful, and they modulate the body's response to injury and trauma. We have multiple published peer-reviewed studies to show that post-traumatic and chronic pain and inflammation are reduced significantly faster with the loop. Many of these studies also show that the loop significantly accelerates the healing of acute and chronic wounds. The human version of the loop has been cleared by the FDA for reduction of pain and edema and is now a standard part of the surgeon's armamentarium to manage post-operative pain and inflammation. The loop is compatible with other physical modalities such as laser therapy used in veterinary practice. It's battery operated and portable so it can be used by the patient at home. You can send us healing home and keep the owner involved in what we're doing. Don't be uh, dissuaded by this uh, very busy looking um, algorithm. This diagram illustrates the primary mode of action of the ACC loop. Activation of the intracellular calcium buffer calmodulin is accelerated, which instantaneously enhances the calmodulin dependent, i.e. anti-inflammatory nitric oxide production. This, in turn, instantaneously enhances blood and lymph flow and reduces inflammatory cytokine production. This rapidly decreases pain and edema. Enhanced nitric oxide signaling also accelerates growth factor production which increases angiogenesis and tissue repair. This graph shows that nitric oxide is involved in the inflammatory, the second proliferative, and the third regeneration stages of wound repair. The graph shows that a large quantity of nitric oxide is produced in the inflammatory stage. Upon injury, macrophages and neutrophils produce IL-1 beta, which upregulates INOS, or inducible, nitric oxide synthase, which causes the body to produce large amounts of nitric oxide. This unnecessarily prolongs the inflammatory stage of repair. Also upon injury, intracellular calcium increases, and it's immediately captured by calmodulin. This reaction activates CNOS, or the constitutive NOS, which produces short bursts of nitric oxide to be produced. This is a pathway that can be enhanced by the ACC loop. These calmodulin-dependent transient bursts of nitric oxide downregulate INOS, the pro-inflammatory version, via a negative feedback mechanism. And this is why the loop is especially effective at this stage, because it reduces the excessive pro-inflammatory nitric oxide, and therefore, duration of the inflammatory phase. This leads to accelerated healing because growth factor production is accelerated. We're going to go back a little bit and talk about science. Hang on. This summarizes the mode of action of the ACC loop more in detail. So, upon injury, intracellular calcium increases and is immediately captured by calmodulin, which is then activated together. The loop enhances this initial response which in turn increases nitric oxide synthase activation, which produces increased bursts of nitric oxide, and in turn enhances cyclic GMP and cyclic AMP. Increased cyclic GMP from the loop causes immediate enhancement of blood and lymph flow, which reduces inflammation more rapidly. Enhanced cyclic GMP also modulates cytokines and growth factors which also reduce inflammation and enhance healthy, normal angiogenesis and tissue repair. Increased cyclic AMP from the loop accelerates cell differentiation, matrix formation, which enhances tissue repair, which is what we're striving for. 
This slide summarizes the basic science behind the development of the specific radio frequency that targeted PEMF signal delivered by the EC loop. The identified target, as I said, is calcium calmodulin binding, the kinetic and the electrical properties of which enabled the specific loop parameters to be chosen. Once the calcium calmodulin target receives a loop signal, nitric oxide signaling is instantaneously enhanced within milliseconds. The PEMF signal was chosen to target this binding, thus the loop signal is a targeted PEMF signal. Others can't claim this. Here to compare other PEMF devices, which deliver signals that can also modulate the calcium calmodulin pathway. However, they are not configured specifically 100% to target the calcium calmodulin pathway. Therefore, only a portion of the induced electric field will be applied to this pathway. So a portion is lost, and that means they are not as effective. Here is a graph that shows how the ACC targeted PMF delivers virtually 100% of its pulsed electromagnetic field therapy dose to enhance the nitric oxide pathway and therefore reduce pain more efficiently. The bar graph compares other devices currently on the market, which many of you may use. The comparison is on the basis of how much of the total signal is actually delivered to the calcium calmodulin pathway. As may be seen, other devices deliver only a portion of their signal and thus would be expected to be less efficient for pain relief and relief from inflammation. This slide demonstrates that there are two peer-reviewed level one randomized studies on the use of PMF to reduce post-operative pain after breast augmentation. And again, I apologize, my job in the veterinary market is to actually reproduce these studies in veterinary medicine but what we rely on so far is the science in the human field. The Heaton study used a soft pulse, which is actually the FDA-cleared human version of the loop, and the Ross study used device two, also a pulsed radio frequency signal. If we compare the results, it shows that the soft pulse, i.e. the ACC loop, reduced post-operative pain more than two-fold faster than that produced by device two. Strong evidence that the PMF dose delivered by device two in the calcium calmodulin pathway was substantially less than delivered by the soft pulse, i.e. the loop signal. So we're gonna go into some of the studies that uh, have been done to get this um, <coughs> uh, modality cleared by the FDA. Peer-reviewed blinded animal studies clearly show that the loop PMF signal accelerates cutaneous wound healing and tendon repair by reducing pro-inflammatory cytokines and increasing growth factor productions. In both studies, full thickness cutaneous wounds in rats and transected Achilles tendons in rats, the strength measurements of the repair provided objective ed evidence that the loop accelerated healing and made a stronger repair. This is the actual in situ waveform delivered by the ACC loop. The loop generates a two millisecond burst of 27.12 megahertz FCC regulated shortwave radio signal, which repeats at two bursts per second. The induced magnetic field is four microtesla, for which the induced electrical field is about five volts per meter. A measure of peak power in C2 or SAR of specific absorption rate shows that the loop signal is non-thermal, which is very different than some of the other modalities we have, such as ultrasound. It is a low amplitude and means that it cannot be perceived by the patient. Occasionally, some warmth may be experienced as a result of increased blood flow from PEMF. However, our signal does not induce a heated reaction. This diagram represents the approximate magnetic field distribution as it propagates from the plane of the coil in both directions. The magnetic field, which penetrates without loss through hard and soft tissue, bandages, casting material, etc., decreases rapidly with distance. This causes the effective treatment volume to decrease with distance from the plane of the coil. Thus, you can imagine a football shape going through the middle of the loop. 
We have two versions of the ACC Loop currently, the ACC Loop 150 and the ACC Loop Automatic or AutoCycle. The ACC Loop 150 delivers at least, at minimum, 150 15-minute treatment sessions. And if taken care of properly, i.e. not left in the dashboard or out in the rain, this can deliver 200, 250 treatments. We still have owners reporting that they're going and going and going. The ACC Loop Automatic or Auto Cycle, when you turn it on, it cycles for its 15 minutes, turns itself off, and will turn itself back on in two hours. And this will continue for at least 100 treatments. This is best used in acute trauma or post-surgical situations. This slide, targeted PMF effect on calmodulin, shows the early evidence that the TPMF signal actually targets the calcium calmodulin pathway and enhances the activity of myosin light chain kinase, which in turn catalyzes myosin light chain phosphorylation, which is related to the smooth muscle contraction and relaxation, which modulates blood flow, which we want. This study also showed that the calcium calmodulin binding kinetics were increased about twofold which explains the increase in calmodulin activation. This study shows that when cells are challenged with the lipopolysaccharide, LPS, to actually cause inflammation, targeted PEMF immediately enhances nitric oxide production, as seen on the left. It is important to note that targeted PEMF has no effect if not challenged, which is seen on the graph on the right. This explains why no adverse effects have been reported by targeted PEMF therapy. If it has nothing to act upon, it doesn't act. These studies confirm that calcium calmodulin is a TPMF target pathway. If we block calmodulin from binding to and activating its target enzyme, it also blocks a PMF effect that provides strong evidence that PMF modulates this entire pathway. The TPMF effect on both nitric oxide and cyclic GMP production was blocked using calmodulin antagonists as shown on the right. This study shows that targeted PMF downregulates IL-1 beta, which is consistent with the targeted PMF effect on nitric oxide signaling. In this study, mononuclear cells were subject to heat shock challenge. And you can tell demonstrated by the bar graph, targeted PMF had much lesser fold expression of IL-1 beta, the inflammatory marker. During a temperature shock challenge, targeted PMF downregulates IL-1 beta. That's the first black and gray bar graph on the left. And it also shows that it upregulated IL-5, 6, and 10, which are anti-inflammatory. Again, this is consistent with a targeted pulsed electromagnetic field therapy effect on nitric oxide signaling. This is an in vivo study showing that a targeted PMF significantly increased angiogenesis, and this is healthy angiogenesis, in a rat heart which was thermally injured. Overall, targeted PEMF doubled the number of new blood vessels in 21 days. That's pretty cool. The results shown here were obtained by feeding the rats L-name, a general nitric oxide synthase inhibitor. As may be seen, the targeted PEMF effect on angiogenesis was blocked. Again, strong support for the mechanism of action of targeted PEMF. This experiment created traumatic brain injury in rats. Without PEMF, IL-1 beta is very elevated, and that's shown by the bright blue graph. With targeted PEMF, the levels are quite reduced, shown by the red bar. This is a very good example of a controlled animal experiment. You have intact control minus and plus your therapy. 
This is a mouse stroke model in which a stroke was produced by occluding the distal middle cerebral artery. Recovery from this will involve an array of cytokines and chemokines, which you see are modulated in the right direction. All the ones in orange on the left are upregulated. They are healthy. All the ones on the right are downregulated, and they are pro-inflammatory. The important clinical result event, uh, results in a smaller infarct size with targeted PEMF. And that's really important in stroke cases. So these graphs showing targeted PMF effect on the cerebrovascular flow in vivo are very exciting. They show that targeted PMF has the known effect on blood flow via the nitric oxide cyclic GMP signaling. On the left, targeted PMF increases capillary blood flow in an anesthetized rat brain. So you see to the left, they hover around 100, the flow velocity percent. And after the mint green bar, when they get PMF, they're substantially elevated. Alternatively, when you block it with the CNOS inhibitor, L name, as we discussed before, it actually blocks the effect of what PMF can do, and they all fall below 100%. These two studies, on the left, a full thickness cutaneous wound, and on the right, a transected Achilles tendon, targeted PMF therapy was applied. In both instances, the left and the right, you can see that the repaired tissues treated with targeted PMF had stronger tensile strength than the sham treated by 59% and 69% stronger than the sham. This demonstrates a post-operative breast surgery. There are more inflammatory markers in the sham-treated women. The study on the left shows just in breast reduction surgery the amount of exudate that is produced. On the right is breast reconstruction plus an additional surgery of the transrectus abdominis muscle flap, the tram flap. In both situations, targeted PMF, which is shown by the bolder line on the bottom of both graphs, down-regulates IL-1 beta, our pro-inflammatory marker. We're going to follow these two studies for a few um, outcome measures. So again, these studies, based on the same women, they were measured after using targeted PMF or SHAMS, and we measure their pain based on visual analog scores, which we're using in veterinary medicine today. The women that use targeted PMF versus a sham, their visual analog scores are very decreased. Same with the women on the right who had additional surgery, the tram flap. Who wouldn't want to experience less pain? This again demonstrates the targeted PMF effect on breast surgery showing that less exudate is produced. So the actual milliliter amount of fluid produced in breast reduction and breast reconstruction was significantly less. Again, same population of women, they measured narcotic intake, and how they do that in humans is Percocet equivalence. So women using the active targeted PMF loop versus the sham required much, much less pill count equivalence. Same with the women that had breast re reconstruction plus the tram flap. Much less medication needed in the active population. So we're going to switch gears at this point and talk about chronic knee pain from osteoarthritis because we see a lot of that in our practices today. This is a chronic osteoarthritis study done at the Henry Ford Clinic. By using the loop versus a sham, there was a 60% reduction in pain within three days of using the loop twice a day for 15 minutes. So where have we had success in using targeted PMF in our veterinary world? Well, we've used it a lot in painful cases, and that's pain due to musculoskeletal, osteoarthritis, post-op orthopedic surgery. 
We've had a lot of success in neurological cases, intervertebral disc disease, wobblers, caudal occipital malformation, and wounds, fresh wounds or non-healing when they lick and form a granuloma. Others, eyes and ears. Notoriously, patients hate to have their eyes have drops put into and their ears have Q-tips or medication cannula put into. And that's where we've had success. We've been able to apply our loop to these areas. Targeting where we want to go, besides the feline, uh, which are also a very difficult population, we've been able to manage their pain, including osteoarthritis, um, obstructive urinary blockage, and cystitis, and the ever-foreboding gingivostomatitis. Definitely the loop has success in many of these cases. For our um, target tonight, we're going to talk about equine, laminitis, founder, wobblers, wounds. So before we get into some specific case reports, we're going to talk about pricing because everybody always has to learn the economics and how they're going to pass that along as a benefit to the client. Most of the time that I lecture, I will generally pull the audience, who does rehab, what kind of medicine are you in, etc. And lastly, who has a laser? And the more and more that I lecture around the country, 40, 50, 60 percent of the general population will own a laser. And that's fabulous. I love the laser. Definitely has a part in my practice for pain management. But you only treat them when they're, you're, they are in your office. So what can we do on top of that to make a difference? Well, we can send them home with the loop. And the loop will actually carry on the good effects of what the laser has done in your office because clients aren't really going to come in every day and have laser therapy. So we want to do the laser in the office, send them home with the loop. If you buy one to four loops, you can buy them for 149 The price decreases as you get up to 10 plus loops. Suggested resale value is 249 each. And depending on at what price point you buy and resell to the client, and how many treatments they get out of that loop. It can go down to as low as $1.50 per treatment, and even lower if some of these loops have really longevity up to 250 treatments in them. Alternatively, other practices choose to rent out the loop per treatment, per day, per week, et cetera. So you can fit in and see how it does within your practice. So. Let's move on to some case studies. My job within a CC is to actually formulate the clinical trials to prove the worth in veterinary medicine. Right now, we have quite a great big selection, a library of case reports that deal with many different topics. So I have chosen my favorite for tonight's uh, equine management. Our first case is on wound care. Now. Oops, what happened here? This colt was put out in the pasture with two other colts in Ocala, Florida. He was apparently kicked, and we're unsure of all the details. However, the wound was only discovered two days later, so I think these guys were put out, there was a shed, et cetera. They didn't come back in for two days. By the time the farm manager saw it, it was contaminated, and the decision was to make it clean, slather ointment on top of it, and wrap the hawk. Definitely not a clean wound at this point. The ACC loop was taped into place and used twice daily for five days. His leg was actually only wrapped for two of the days. From days three to five, the loop was taped directly to his leg. The picture here, I'm sorry, is not as clear as the first picture, however, we can see here there's much less edema and inflammation. One month later, when we actually visited, this is what the wound looked like, which is pretty good. Considering Florida, hot weather, flies, etc., and this is the only treatment this cold got. It's pretty amazing, I think. We're going to go on to Bill. Not sure how many of you know Bill. Here's a photo of Bill just to show you what an athlete he is. He's pretty handsome. 
Bill is an eight-year-old, or I should say, eight-year young horse who is a 2011 and 2012 International Professional Barrel Racing Association World Champion Barrel Racer. Also, in 2012, he was Horse of the Year. This guy is obviously no slacker. An equine massage therapist recommended the Assisi Loop for Bill as he has a litany of problems. His left hip was visibly lower than the right, and the muscle structure surrounding that hip was atrophied. He was improving, but he had the same issue again and again, and this indicates that there's a deep or chronic issue. He also had chronic neck pain, then pulled a middle gluteal muscle, and lastly, of course, there's always one in the crowd, kicked through a fence and ran away with part of the fence attached to his leg. It burned the inside of his hock. Of course, it was the same side as his atrophied muscles. And of course, as we can predict, it became infected and developed cellulitis. His therapist prescribed the Assisi Loop Auto Cycle, which turns itself off and on. This is a picture of Bill with loops pinned to his blankets because he has areas, both left and right hip, etc., but showing how we can be crafty with our treatment, pin it to the inside, and he had the automatic cycle all night long to make him feel better. This is Bill with a loop treating his neck. The therapist just took a piece of rope and tied it over his neck, kind of counterbalanced on the other side. Bill doesn't seem too worse for wear there. So here's the exciting stuff. Within one month of nightly a CC usage, let's say every two hours we might get four treatments out of it, we were actually able to begin to compete in four weeks after her vet diagnosed Bill being in severe pain regarding his back. He went into four rodeos, four weekends in a row. The first one, he won with ease. The second one, one week later, he won by two-tenths. It's pretty cool. The third rodeo, he placed in every single run, and he got faster in every run, which has never happened in his career. Wouldn't happen in my career. The last rodeo, he actually set an arena record. So the owner knew that the loop was actually doing something because that's all that he was getting at that point. And that's pretty cool. This horse must be tired. But the vet is skeptical, of course, because we don't have a lot of documentation. But this owner was convinced. So even though he's skeptical, the vet performs a physical exam to try and elicit pain. The vet uses lasers, shockwave units. He's no stranger to these modalities, and he firmly believes in rehabilitation. The vet could not find any pain on Bill, and we were pretty happy about that. And that makes Bill a happy horse. He loves his loops, and he doesn't go anywhere without them. Happy horse, happy owner. We like to keep them involved in our circle of care. So here is Molly, our next case. Molly is a 17-year-old Icelandic pony who foundered in all four feet. She was lame for six months prior to examination with a three out of five lameness and bounding digital pulses in all fours. Of course, we're dealing with an owner with a limited budget, so we couldn't perform all the tests we wanted to do. We did a trial treatment of medication, suggest the cause of her condition, equine metabolic syndrome, and we're going to radiograph all four feet. So here are the radiographs of the front feet showing significant rotation. The right front has a 25.27 degree rotation, left front 24 degrees. Radiographs of her hind feet also show significant rotation, not as bad as the front. Right hind, 12.18, the left hind, 11.32. After two weeks of putting Molly in a dry lot, feeding grass hay, and getting her thyro supplementation, her digital pulses are barely palpable. We have only done a CC lube treatments, 15 minutes every 12 hours. That's how we're going to start. The CC lube, as you can see here, 
The focal point is over the dorsal portion of the coronet band on each hoof. Pretty easy to apply. 30 days later, with just using the loop twice a day, plus our oral medication, we retake radiographs and they show that the right front has a four degree improvement. The left front has an eight degree improvement. Her right hind, almost five degrees improvement, and her left hind, again, five degrees improvement. So we're gonna keep on this plan. Clinically, upon examination, Molly's lameness was resolving. Now she's only two out of five lame on all four feet. We can't feel any more digital pulses. We're gonna continue her treatment protocol for more than six months because we know that this is going to be a long-term treatment plan. And during the following 180 days, she continued to improve with no lameness, no digital pulses, and a steady decreasing rotation in all four feet, which is pretty cool. So about 180 days later, we measure her front feet. The right front had a 14, almost 15 degree improvement in rotation. Her left front had almost a 12 degree improvement in rotation. Her hind feet at the same time point had almost a four and a half degree improvement, and her left hind had a two degree improvement. Still pretty good with just applying these loops twice a day. So we're gonna compare each joint now to when they were seen in July, in the summer of 2014, and early spring of 2015. So the right front had a 25 degree rotation and in March, she only had a 5.7 degree rotation. That's 19 and a half degrees improvement. That's pretty cool. Her left front had a 24 degree rotation and months later had a 4.49 degree rotation, which is almost 20 degrees difference. That makes this horse much more comfortable. Her right hind comparison from July to March July was 12 degrees rotation, and March, three degrees rotation. It's nine degrees, almost 10 degrees improvement. That's pretty cool. And you can see here as evidence on the x-rays, which are pretty sweet, looking at these angles, they certainly look better. And the left hind comparison, 11.32 degrees in July, and in March, 4.11 degrees. Survey says, Seven degrees improvement. That's pretty awesome for this pony. So clinically, she's now able to trot, and oh, by the way, you know, be careful what you wish for. She can buck like an unaffected horse. Her owner can ride her and is happy to pull a cart again with two people. She's returned to living in the pasture with the herd, which makes it much easier on the owners. She has continued the Assisi loop 15 minutes every 12 hours until her cough and bone rotation resolves and we wish Molly well. Here is Gunner. This is pretty exciting. Gunner is a seven-year-old gelding. He's had intermittent lameness for years. Finally, it became, the owner became unable to ride him due to his stumbling. Her vet did an exam and diagnosed him with not a lameness, but a neurologic issue, and he ruled out wobblers. This is a picture of Gunner. He kind of looks like your placid horse, not much going on, but when you see him later on, you'll be able to tell the difference. Her vet took radiographs, and he was able to see compression at C4 and C5. They did not pursue a myelogram due to expense. And in October of 2014, the vet prescribed the Assisi loop every four to six hours for a month. Let's just see what happens. So what happened? Oh my God, after three days, the owner was ecstatic. So again, before he could not really even jog around the pasture, this is him after three days. He's loping. You still see his low neck carriage, but he's actually moving around as the owner hasn't seen him do in months. And that's pretty exhilarating to an owner which just uses this non-invasive form of therapy. Sure, he cross-fired. 
but he couldn't even lope before. So the owner was very encouraged to continue. So she continued, and in March 2015, his uh, recheck examination revealed so many improvements in several neurological parameters, such as his conscious proprioception, his paniculus response bilaterally on his neck, his pivot testing, and his tail pull. Also, the vet noticed that his muscle wasting and atrophy seemed much more improved, which is pretty cool. And again, there's no scientific paper on this. However, the vet noticed the difference. And if I was treating that horse, I would be ecstatic. This is a picture of the CC loop application. Currently, we don't have a neck wrap to put it on, but this certainly gives us an idea to pursue. So she just taped it to his neck. She alternated sides and used it twice a day. This video is so cool. As soon as I turn it on, you want to watch because, again, this horse has not done this in a long time. He lets out this happiness buck immediately. Woo, there you go. He is running around, which he has not done. Look at him. He is happy. If the volume is on, you could hear him snorting, running around. His head carriage is still a tiny bit low, but I will tell you, I mean, this horse radiates happiness and seems very pain-free. Definitely having a good time running around. He could not do this before, and uh, he doesn't look any worse for wear here. All right, Gunner, be careful. Don't hurt yourself. Okay. This makes Gunner and the owner very happy because she's actually able to ride him again, and he's a valuable part of her happiness, and he's happy too with the owner. So where are we going next? CC is developing and implementing a clinical trial strategy. A lot of our focus is on small animals, but some is actually focused on equines. One is currently testing the loops uh, effectiveness combined with standard of care following hemilaminectomy in T3L3 dogs. We're working on a line of wearables and uh, beds and wraps for chronic conditions. We have an equine wound pain study that will actually compare digital palpation, a measurement uh, of pain scoring, and thermography with two different thermography units, and that's going to be pretty exciting. That's going to happen at a university in August, and we're pretty excited about that. Um, <clears throat> any suggestions? If anybody wants to pass on or ask questions, we are more than willing to listen to anybody. This is our information here posted on the screen. Email, look at our website. We have several case reports, information on the mechanism of action if you'd like to learn in more detail or print out to hand to your clients etc.